Salams here watching the international daily roundup People's Dispatch's selection of some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. Officials say Enbridge ruptured three Minnesota aquifers in 2021. Poland and Denmark's actions highlight refugee discrimination. NGOs urge faster repatriation of foreign children from Syria. And Sweden has approved a British iron mine on indigenous land. First up, Enbridge ruptured three groundwater aquifers while building its Line 3 pipeline in the US state of Minnesota in 2021. The Department of Natural Resources has said that the damage is more severe than previously expected. The punctures led to almost 300 million gallons of groundwater to flow to the surface. The worst of these took place near the Fond du Lac, a band of Lake Superior in the Chippewa Reservation. Over 200 million gallons of water flowed out with more still flowing. The first breach took place during the winter at a major junction near Clearbrook, which endangered a rare wetland area. Enbridge has paid over $3.3 million for the infraction. The Department of Natural Resources learned of the second breach on the 5th of August and another on September 15th. These ruptures were disclosed earlier this week. The breach poured groundwater onto reservation land upstream of Deadfish Lake. It could potentially affect wild rice waters and violate water quality standards. Line 3 was completed in September despite years of resistance and opposition by indigenous communities. A 340-mile-long stretch of the tar sands pipeline has been carved through Anishinaabe territory in northern Minnesota. Local communities have long maintained that the project violates land treaties and could endanger the sacred wild rice plant. It also increases the likelihood of another devastating environmental disaster. The Line 3 pipeline has caused extensive damage in surrounding areas. This includes a major oil spill in 1991 when 1 1.7 million barrels of oil flowed into the Prairie River. European countries that have been openly hostile to Asian and African refugees in the past welcomed millions of people fleeing the war in Ukraine in the past weeks. However, as mass displacement continues, governments have started raising objections. Denmark's Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen said on Tuesday that Ukrainian refugees must return home as soon as possible. She added that they would not be integrated into Danish society. Her statements were made in relation to a special law passed in Parliament to grant temporary stay and work permits. Ukrainian refugees would also be granted access to educational institutions and welfare schemes. The law was condemned by left parties for being discriminatory. Refugees from countries such as Syria are denied such rights and have even had their residency permits withdrawn. Refugees have also been subject to the jewellery law under which their personal belongings are seized to compensate the state for their stay in Denmark. However, Denmark has also made it clear that it will not provide asylum to anyone fleeing Ukraine. It is not yet clear how many of the 3.5 million refugees have come to Denmark so far. Meanwhile, the mayor of Warsaw stated on Wednesday that the city of Warsaw uh, and Poland, the country, had reached their capacity to receive refugees. An estimated 2.2 million Ukrainian refugees have fled to Poland so far. The government has passed a law to provide educational rights and welfare schemes to Ukrainian refugees for 18 months. This is again a stark contrast to the brutal treatment of refugees from Syria, Iraq, as well as Afghanistan. Warsaw's mayor justified this differential treatment in the name of, I quote, cultural and political factors, end quote. The NGO Save the Children has warned that foreign children could be stuck in camps in northeast Syria for as many as 30 years. There is also an urgent need for the safe and voluntary return of 18,000 Iraqi children. The current slow pace of repatriation has left children in unsafe and dire conditions. According to the NGO, 74 children died in the Al Hol camp in 2021. In February, a shooting incident took place in the annex section, which houses third world nationals. One child was injured and three children and three women were hospitalized. Aside from Iraqi children, over 7,300 minors from as many as 60 countries are living in the Al Hol and Roj camps. Save the Children has documented conditions of avoidable illness and death, violence, poor sanitation and limited health care. Only 40% of children in Al Hol were receiving an education. 55% of households in Roj reported being aware of child labour among children below 11 years of age. Last month, the United Nations Child Rights Committee concluded that France had violated the rights of French children detained by Syria by failing to repatriate them. It considered three cases brought by the French nationals. 
The case involved 49 children being held at Roj, N. Isa and Hull camps. Their parents were alleged to have collaborated with the ISIL terror group and it was first brought before the committee in 2019 and 11 children had been repatriated as of February 2022. And finally, Sweden has authorised UK-based company Beowulf Mining to dig an open-cast iron ore mine on indigenous Sami land. The proposed Gallic site is located 30 miles from the town of Jokmok in the Lapland province. Sweden has granted the concession despite years of resistance by the Sami people and international organisations like the United Nations as well as Amnesty International. The Sami parliament also wrote to the government stating that the mine would destroy grazing areas. It would also cut off the only viable migratory route for reindeer who are followed by the Sami people. Communities lying east and west of the mine would also face a reduction in grazing areas. These areas are already under pressure due to climate change, logging and a hydroelectric dam. In February, two independent United Nations experts called on Sweden to scrap the mining project altogether. They argued that the project would create a significant amount of toxic waste and other contaminants. This would cause irreversible risks, they said, to land used by the Sami communities. The experts further added that the mine had gone forward without the free and prior informed consent of the indigenous peoples. They also noted that there had been insufficient assessment and recognition of the mine's potential for environmental damage. Importantly, the concession has been approved despite a law passed in January which mandated the government to consult the Sami peoples on matters that concern them. That's all we have on this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more details on these stories, you can head on over to our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and do give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.